we're talking Detroit Lions training camp. Just got done talking about Kirby Joseph and co, the team, the reputation. Do you really care about the barking? Do you really care about the reputation? As long as they're playing clean, the team is down for it, man. So let's rock. But they got a game tonight. <laughs> I, I know that there's not much victory lap in that final. Sam's going to do, even though I'm on like 72 <laughs> of the J-Mo Waymo victory lap preseason training camp tour. Mm -hmm. I'm just so, stretching the legs. That's all. Listen, bro. I, I promise you. I promise you. If J-Mo shows up like 60 yards and a touchdown tonight. <sighs> Stop it. Stop it. I'm standing for big D and he's tomorrow. <laughs> 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 oh, man. But. Let's get into it, man. Non-starters, because we already know. Through preseason, it's going to be a lot of the, the, the rookies, guys trying to make the team, your backups and such, your rotation players, looking to make an impression. And so what I want to ask you guys is, what role player are you looking forward to the most in this preseason? Well, well first, we got to see first. Well, they're going to be wearing out on the field tonight. Because I think that, yeah. you know, if you want to uplift the role players. Well, you know what? You know, want to uplift them. You got to look good and you got to feel good. Let's show this real quick and then get into the conversation. Not to cut you off. Oh. No, oh, you're good. So we got the whites, nice. JB? Yep, we got the whites this week, uh, tonight that they're going to be rocking, though. Newer, whiter jerseys, obviously. Everything matches with the helmet and socks. So, I mean, it looks kind of clean to me, even though this isn't my preferable jersey. But still, it looks clean. Are they all white or is that blue? What's the blue Nike sign? Like, where is that? The or are these marshmallows? No, I don't think these are marshmallows. Okay. These are the what the Roar uniforms, I believe. That's what they're called, the three one threes. Okay. So I don't, I don't know what that blue is. I feel like that's like a headband or something. Maybe, yeah. Got you. All right, well there it is. That's Sorry, Chloe, back to you. No, no, it's it's very appropriate. It's a game day. It's oh yeah, a game day. Let's get started with the unis first. Shout out to Burn as well. Ten dollars super chat. He said, you know you are good when other teams are whining that you are too good. Yep. Like your little brother throwing his controller because you're mopping the floor with him <laughs> in Smash. <laughs> it's fair. <laughs> it's so appropriate, man. Chat is definitely on one. Continue to engage in the chat, chat family. I need you guys as well to tell me what role players are you looking forward to the most this preseason? Got to start with you, Flannel. Ooh. All right. So I have one in particular. I'm just making sure that he's not – that he's healthy and not hurt. One second, one second. It looks like he's active. For me, this is an easy one. The role player that I am looking forward to, to watching the most and I think has the most to prove is one Donovan Peoples-Jones. And here's why. This is a man who in 2022 with the Browns had over 60 catches for 800 receiving yards. For over 800 receiving yards. His first three seasons in the league, he basically had steady, linear improvement every single season. Last year, statistically, was not a good year for him. And when you're a guy who is as talented and as many, as many physical tools as Donovan Peoples-Jones, and this is with all due respect for, to him, it should be an embarrassment that he's fighting for a roster spot with a guy like Darius Fountain. Mm -hmm. It should be an embarrassment that the heavyweights are basically blowing loads over Darius Fountain for what he's doing <laughs> in training camp while basically saying Donovan Peoples-Jones, eh, didn't even really notice him. It should be embarrassing that you're fighting for a roster spot with a guy like Caden Davis, undrafted Caden Davis, seventh rounder Antoine Green. And I'm not disrespecting those guys. I'm just saying that Donovan Peoples-Jones has way more raw talent, that, probably more raw talent than all three of those guys I mentioned combined. And we're not really hearing much out of him when it comes to trading camp. On the first unofficial roster, it looks like Donovan Peoples-Jones is kind of anywhere between wide receiver five and wide receiver eight. He's got to show out, and he's got to, he's, he's actually might be fighting for a roster spot, yeah. and he has to show out in the preseason. He has no choice. Jeez, you know, that's a great one. That's great. I, I don't even know if there's one that tops it for me when you're talking about DPJ and, and everything we talked about with the, the biggest questions facing this offense. To me, it is the wide receiver room. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily the pass catchers, because I have a lot of faith, obviously, in Sam Laporta. I like the fact they brought back Brock Wright. I like, I'm hoping that Jameer Gibbs gets involved. When you're talking about Donovan's people, Jones, that was the guy that we thought, hey, you know what? You're losing Josh Reynolds, who was supposed mm -hmm. to be Mr. Reliable, somebody who had this chemistry. And we thought that DPJ, who was shown in the past, that he could be a similar type of player, that you know what? We could depend on that and maybe get a little bit more out of his frame, out of his athleticism, and to know that uh, to this point he hasn't really made any, really move, any real movement, it's a little bit disappointing. It is. And Ryan's reaction, talent doesn't mean ish without dedication. But 
The thing about Donovan Peoples-Jones, though, is that we saw it in Cleveland. And we and a lot of us, I even said that in a perfect world, given talent for talent, that he could even put up a more productive season than Josh Reynolds if he gets himself right. But I don't think people understand. Darius Fountain is a guy who's been basically a journeyman on different practice squads in the NFL, has two catches his yep. entire career. And right now, Darius Fountain, it looks like, is more likely to make the team than DPJ. It's crazy. Cannot happen. Yep. Hopefully will not happen. Got to show out in preseason down at People's Jones. And remember, when you do, look back at, yep. look back at me as your motivator. Now, I have a question. I, I don't know if this person is considered a role player or not, but James Houston. Hell yeah. Does he mm -hmm. count? Yes. How would that, he would be a role player, yeah. Okay, that's a guy who I'm looking. We talked about him a little bit yesterday, and for uh, the better part of a season and a half now, we've been sitting here saying, just wait till we get James Houston back. Just wait till we get James Houston back. That's a guy that I'm hoping we see a lot more from, not just preseason, obviously, mm -hmm. but during the season, because we understand the high potential talent that he has of what he put out there on season one. We're talking about getting somebody nasty to pair with Aiden Hudson uh, at least in a rotation on the other side of that line. If James Houston is right, this defensive line is right. That, I believe Aline McNeil is going to ball. That's a great one. J man, if James Houston can even give you some of the pass rushing prowess you saw from him in 2022, this could be a certainly a dangerous defense. Matt Broder, I want to hear from you. Which yeah, I, role player are you looking forward to watching in the preseason tonight? Yeah, and I see some good ones in the chat. Mike, Mike Reed, Baki, and Levi. TK85, TK85, TK. um, John Effing Lord, <laughs> no, 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 and then Hooker, Michael Weary, Roderick Martin. I see some good ones. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Colby Soresdale. Not bad. And I, I, I was deciding between any of the backup offensive linemen, maybe even backup interior offensive linemen, but Colby Soresdale to me is a guy I'm I'm fascinated with because they they moved him to guard. I don't know if that's gonna be the position he plays long term. It seems like they're working him as a swing tackle. Um, whether that's in Skipper's spot uh, in some points or backing up Taylor Decker or Penny Sewell. I just want to see what kind of jump he made season to season because mm -hmm. there were times last year it looked it looked brutal. There were times where it was like, all right, I see a little something there. He was thrown into the into the mix pretty early. I think it was the Falcons yeah. game. Um, and, and you could tell it was just a lot. He's experienced, but he did put, come from William & Mary, so he just needs time. I'm excited to see the jump he made from year one to year two. Colby Soresdale. Yeah. Also think backup offensive line. It's an important part of this team. Absolutely. Very, very important. So, KG? Yes, KG. Yeah, sure. And uh, I like everybody's pick so far. Sam, you you uh, eloquated that good with DPJ. Also, somebody that Dan Campbell even came out in the press conference and said they haven't got what they expected to get out of him. So hopefully he can come out and at yeah. least get that fourth wide receiver role. Like, even if you're not wide receiver three, fine. But you have to make this team, I feel like, if you're DPJ. Um, of course, James Houston, another great one. I love what you said with Kobe Sorsdahl. Me, it's more of a unit. I want to see that interior defensive line, man. Mm. Broderick Martin, Levi Anzarike in particular, and maybe even Makai Wingo if he gets some snaps tonight. Not sure if he will, but um, Levi O, somebody that, you know, that's been on this team a long time, has had an injury history, and that kind of seemed like he may fall by the wayside. Um, also, Broderick Martin, somebody that, that has come back kind of on a mission. He, he changed his body. Um, didn't really see him a lot last year. He was a third round pick project that the Lions knew they were going to have to work on. So I just want to see what they look like because the uh, substitutes on that interior defensive line are going to be really integral um, part of this defensive success, man, going forward, especially when you got a guy like DJ Reader who's injury prone and, and things of that nature. They're going to be using that as a rotational area and you want to see Levi O and Broderick Martin do well. Yep. And, and you know what? You broke that down so eloquently yourself. Oh, thank yeah, you. Yeah, he started off by make sure to compliment all of our oh. selections, and then he did that. But, but KG, I'm a little disappointed in you. Why? No Master Bates? Ah, uh, cool. <laughs> well, of course. Of course I'll be watching the kickers, man. Absolutely. Also want to see what Hendon is going to bring to us. But absolutely, I'm definitely going to be watching the kicking tonight. Well, so. well, but KG, like – Honestly, Levi O and Broderick Martin, yeah. that's a good those are good ones. Yeah. Because as of right now, based on what you've seen from them in games, those are probably two of Brad Holmes' biggest misses yeah. up to this point. Yeah. But what I've been hearing out of Levi Onzarike in training camp, what I heard from old Kevin Zeitler, 
leads me to believe that we might be getting more from Levi Onzerike than maybe we ever imagined. So yes. that is certainly yes, exciting. Here. And just imagine if Levi Onzerike and Broderick Martin are good rotational interior <sighs> defensive linemen. That D-line is stacked. That D-line... That D-line is it's potentially stacked. Yeah. You've got guys who you're comfortable being backups actually getting to be backups. It's interesting. Can't wait to see it. And you, if you track it back to, I think it was the 2021 NFL draft where Levi went, if he pans out, yes. and I don't know if Jamar Jefferson really is going to, but people are talking about him having a great training camp. We're talking about a 100% hit rate on mm -hmm. that draft. <laughs> Absolute insanity.